What's going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the ooh collar nerd. Cause Halloween. Now I do have some release notes here to go over with you, but first I need to show you my Halloween costume this year. Now I need to warn you before I do this, it's, it's pretty gruesome, it's kind of scary. If you're watching this with like kids in the room or something, you might want to clear them out, but it's pretty cool. You ready? Hang on, let me go put it on. Huh? Huh? What do you think? Pretty scary, right? All right, sorry, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'll take it off. All right, sorry about those nightmares. Let's jump in. So first under intact, intact users now have access to that transaction reconciliation report. We talked about that report last release notes, but that time it was only for QuickBooks users. Now, uh, if you are on intact, you can use that report as well. Next under accounting, the invoice screen has been renamed to the accounting screen. So since there are things on that screen like AR management, it just made more sense to call that the accounting screen than just invoice because there's more than just invoices on that screen. Otherwise, everything there is still the same, it's just been renamed. Next, under call booking. This is one of my favorites on these notes for sure. Recalls, warranties, and job generated leads can now be booked directly from the call booking screen. So before, if you wanted to book a lead, a warranty job, or a recall, you had to go back to the original job that this lead, warranty, or recall stems off of, and then go down to the job actions drop down and book the job from there. And the only problem with that was that it never happened. I mean, seriously, I know this was a problem in my dad's company and I've done some consulting and I've seen this time and time again where these types of jobs just don't get booked correctly because they're this weird anomaly that have to be booked differently than any other type of job. And when those aren't booked properly, that gives you inaccurate reporting and oftentimes can cause some payroll related headaches. But now that's no longer necessary. Those types of jobs can be booked directly from the call booking screen like every other type of job. And you can even provide instructions to your CSRs to help them understand when to use each type of job. Now it's important to note here that you do have to toggle this on. You can do it yourself. You don't need to ask your CSM, but you do have to turn it on in your settings. So in order to do that, you're going to go to your settings and then under operations, you'll see a category known as booking jobs. Click on that and then you'll get to this page right here. At the top, you'll see this toggle switch that you can turn on to enable linking recalls, warranties, and leads from the calls page. And you'll also have these text boxes where you can put in descriptions of what each type of job, recall, warranty, and lead means specifically to your company to help your CSRs understand when to use each one of them. Then on the call booking screen, when your CSRs pick a location to book a job for, they'll have this additional banner of information here that tells you the last time that a technician was out to that location. And then they'll have three new buttons, recall, warranty, and lead. There will also be this learn more button. And if they click that, then they will see this description of everything you typed out to explain when to use each type of job. This is wonderful because now we can directly book recurring services from the main call screen and we can book recalls, warranties, and leads from the main call screen. So there's no more anomalies. There's no more weird specific use cases, specific types of jobs that we have to book a different way than other types of jobs. They can all be done from the job booking screen. And if you ask me, this is better. Much better. So yeah, I definitely recommend going into your settings and toggling that on. Next, we have prevent selecting non-matching business units on the call screen. If your business units map to specific zones or regions, it's imperative that your CSRs are booking for the right business units. For example, plumbing service West LA instead of plumbing service East LA. Previously, business units were grouped by matching and non-matching zones, but CSRs could still select inappropriate business units for the job. With this new improvement, you can configure your account so that CSRs cannot select non-matching business units. And note that this only applies to the call screen, so it won't work if you're booking a job from a flyout somewhere else, like off of the original job. And do also note that there is some account configuration involved in this one, so if this is something that you feel like you need, get with your CSM and they can help you set that up. This is mostly going to be beneficial for larger companies that cover very broad service areas. Next, they have removed the, are you sure you wanna close this call screen warning. So before, anytime you closed out of a call screen, be it from a green call bubble or from a manual call, you would get this warning asking if you were sure that you wanted to close it. But now that warning is removed for green call bubble calls, or if you're using the new leads feature, 
Then it's removed entirely, and if you're not sure what that new leads feature is, it's from a couple release notes back. Here's a clip where I explain what that is. So basically, when a CSR takes a call or starts to book a job, and then doesn't end up booking a job for whatever reason, in that same dialogue that they use to classify the call and fill out the call reason, they now have the option to log a follow-up so that it then hits the follow-up screen under leads and they can call back later. Now this particular feature is currently gated and requires an account configuration from your CSM. So if this is something you'd like to go ahead and start using, let your CSM know and they can turn it on for you. Right, so anyways, removing that warning just saves some time from having to close it out all the time basically. Next, under dispatch technicians can now belong to more than one zone. So to help pave the way for upcoming scheduling features, ooh, ooh, technicians can now be assigned to more than one zone at once. And the zone they were previously assigned to will be their main zone. Next, there's a new priority column in the jobs tray. So the jobs tray is that table right underneath the dispatch board. And now when you're looking down there at the unassigned jobs, there's this new priority column that helps you to assign your higher priority jobs to your best technicians. And job priority is something that's been around for a while, you just haven't been able to see it down there. But you can set that up by job type and that will auto populate on the call screen, but CSRs can always edit the job priority from the call screen if they need to. Next, we have faster dispatch board performance. We've improved the way that the dispatch board loads data, making the dispatch board and job tray feel Feel snappier to use. Is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? Anybody? I want to go fast. Next, under equipment, new type column for equipment service history. Now, this one builds on something that we talked about in the last release, so I'm going to replay that clip just to refresh your memory. Now, a technician will be able to choose a material in order to mark an equipment as serviced. For example, a filter or belt for an air conditioning unit. This update builds on an earlier release which allowed technicians to mark equipment as serviced with a task from your price book. Note that service material links are not yet supported. Okay, so from the mobile app, if you go to the history tab and go into the existing equipment, if you tap this three dot menu, it's called a kebab menu in the upper right hand corner, you can mark that specific equipment piece as serviced using a task from your price book. That's something we got fairly recently. And now with this update, you can also mark that specific equipment piece as serviced using a material from your price book. Then on the office side, on the location page, if you go down to where the equipment is, if you click into that piece of equipment, you'll see this history area where you can see the service history for that specific piece of equipment. So before you were only able to do that with service tasks, now you can do that with service tasks or materials. Okay, so now when you're looking at the equipment service history, there's a type column to let you know whether that equipment was serviced via a material or a service. Also building on that same note, there is now the ability to service equipment using a task with material links. So now you'll be able to mark a piece of equipment as serviced using a task from the price book that has a material link. Both the task and the linked material will now show up under the equipment service history and on respective invoice items. So before it was kind of one or the other, you could mark it serviced with a service or with the material, but not both, not a service that had materials linked to it. But now that is supported. And do remember that there is some account configuration required for this one. So if you're not seeing the ability to do this, get with your CSM. And the gated feature is called enable equipment servicing from items. So if you're interested, that's what you need to ask about. All right, next under follow-ups. The opportunities tab in follow-ups is now on sold estimates. Again, this is just a difference in naming. Everything else remains the same, but just opportunities was a little vague and on sold estimates is usually the main reason you're going to that tab. So it's now called on sold estimates instead of opportunities. Next, you can now set a specific time for mobile follow-up reminders. So in the mobile follow-ups tab, technicians have for a while now been able to set themselves reminders to remind them to call that customer back. But before they were only able to set a specific day and now they can set a specific day and time. So that does add a little bit of extra functionality. Now, right now, those follow-up mobile reminders are only in app. So what it does is it puts that little badge on the follow-ups tab that shows you that you have reminders and then it adds a reminder tag to that follow-up so that you know that, hey, that's the one that I set myself up to call back today at this time. Now, I know that somewhere down the pipeline, they are working on alerts so that you don't have to actually go into the app to see whether or not you have reminders. It will just send you a text. So I don't know exactly when that will come. I'm just the humble blue collar nerd, but I do know that it's being worked on. I know that when I read this note, that was something that came to my mind, like, hey, when can we do that? That would be even better. And I think that's the point that will really take this feature from good to great. So if you're like me and you see that note and you're thinking, yeah, that's great, but I would really like for the technicians to actually get alerted, like get some sort of message without them having 
having to open up the app to see the reminder, just know that that is being worked on. All right, next under forms, there's a new technician license smart field. So smart fields, they're those fields that auto-populate certain pieces of information on a form. For example, customer name, customer address, and you can now put one in for the technician license number, and that license number is pulled from the technician profile and settings. And this new smart field is available for both native Service Titan forms and PDF smart forms. All right, next under invoicing, we have an invoice update for California businesses. So when you collect customer signatures on invoices in Service Titan Mobile or the Visit Assistant, the customer invoice now displays the California Contractor State License Board information for customers to review before they sign. Additionally, you can now edit the CCSLB, the CCSLB. You can now edit the CCSLB information in your business unit settings. This ensures the customers understand their rights before they sign their invoices, and you have the flexibility to update the CCSLB notification as needed. Now, this of course is a gated feature since obviously not all businesses are in California. So if you are in California and this is something you need, talk to your CSM, they can get that turned on for you. All right, next under Marketing Pro, we have some enhancements to the email template experience. So if you are searching for an email template and there are no results, you now get this new no results screen. And within that no results screen, you'll see this link where you can request a template. So if you're looking for something and it's not there, you can now fill out this form to let Service Titan know that you would like to have it built. Also, now when you're previewing a template, you can view and edit details such as the subject line, the pre-header, the campaign type, and the tags, as well as who created and last edited the template. There's also new edit and preview buttons on the template cards themselves, so you no longer have to click more and then click edit or click preview from there. And they've also added a new content section to the template screen. So when you open up the template screen, any templates that were added in the last 30 days now go into this new section. And they'll also have a new tag when you're just browsing all of the templates to help you identify which templates are new. Next, under Memberships, there's now an every other month option for billing memberships. You can now configure a periodically billed membership type to be billed every other month. And that, of course, is done within the membership setup. Next, under Payment Collections, another one of my favorites from these notes. So now if there's a credit available on an estimate, when you go to book a job off of that estimate, that new job that you booked off of the original estimate will automatically have that credit applied to it already. And of course, this reduces the steps that you need to take in order to apply the credit to the invoice. Again, to reiterate, Payment Collections is that fairly recent feature that is the new official deposit collecting workflow in Service Titan. And to use that, you do need to be on the QuickBooks 2.0 web connector, which everybody will eventually have to get transferred over into. So if you're still not on the QuickBooks 2.0 web connector, talk to your CSM and they can help you get the ball rolling. Next, under payroll and timesheets, gross margin in the job costing tool. This again is just an issue of nomenclature. We're just renaming some things. So the profit section of the job costing tool now refers to gross margin and percentage gross margin for what was previously called profit and percent profit. The new labels more accurately reflect the calculated KPI. Next, under Pricebook Connect, custom edited fields are tagged when updating items. Now, when you update a Pricebook item from a provider catalog using Pricebook Connect, any custom changes you made to the editable fields are tagged. This alerts you to exclude that field from the update so that you don't accidentally overwrite your changes. And if you're not aware, Pricebook Connect, that's what's used to import things into your price book from either providers that have an integration, like I know Amana, Goodman, Ream, uh, Lennox have integrations, as well as if you're using Service Titan Pricebook Pro. All right, next under reporting gross margin columns in the job reports template. Now that's just like what we talked about earlier with the uh, gross margin in the job costing tool, just an issue of nomenclature. We're renaming the profit and profit percentage columns into uh, gross margin and gross margin percentage. Next, we have gross margin and total revenue columns in the project costing report template. So the project costing report template now includes columns for gross margin, gross margin percentage, and total revenue. This gives you additional tools for measuring the profitability of a project. Next, we have new membership columns in the business unit performance report template. So the business unit performance template now has two new columns, memberships canceled, which is the number of canceled memberships where the business unit filter corresponds with the membership business unit and new sold memberships, which is the number of new memberships that are sold where the business unit filter corresponds with the membership business unit. Next, under sign-in. Again, one of my favorites out of these notes, one-way user account sync from go to next slash training mode environments. 
We've made it even easier to sign into Next slash training environments by automatically synchronizing usernames and passwords from Go environments to Next slash training mode. You can use your current username and password in Go in Next slash training mode and practice environments. If you change your password in Go, your password is automatically updated in Next and training environments. Also, key account-related information in your employee or technician profile, including name, email address, phone number, verification status, and more are also synchronized from Go to Next and training environments. Maybe that sounded a little confusing. Let me say it in my own words. So the next account is of course that sandbox environment where you can go and play with data that isn't your live data so you can mess around and not worry about breaking anything. On the mobile side, it's called training mode, but it's just the mobile side of Next. It's still the Next environment. Now before, let's say you had a new technician and you made them a technician profile in your live account. And now you wanted your new technician to start training with Service Titan, so you had them sign into the app in the live account, and you said, okay, now go over here and go to switch to training mode. Well, they wouldn't be able to do that because they don't have an account in the next account yet. They only have an account in the live account. Okay, kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. We can just go into the next account and make them another account in there, so that way they'll be able to sign in in training mode. Except that accounts need to be verified, so they need to verify their account both in the live account and in the next account. Now typically the most convenient way to verify an account is through a text message, but the next account can't send text messages, it can only send emails, so they would have to verify that through an email. And they're a new technician, so maybe they don't have an email yet, or if they do, they certainly don't know the password yet. They're, it's probably their first day. So now they're frustrated, you're frustrated, everybody's frustrated, it was just a real bad time. And I mean, geez, that could scale up to be really bad. Like, let's say, I don't know, you were some sort of, pff, ah, Service Titan consultant, and you were out being paid to teach a whole bunch of technicians, like a whole room full of technicians, how to use the mobile account, because they've never used the mobile account before. So you set them up test jobs in the next account, but then nobody can access the next account. So you tell them, okay, hang on, let me make you all accounts in the next account, but then, ooh, ooh, they can't verify verify their accounts because they can't send text messages and ooh, nobody knows their passwords to get into their emails. So ooh, okay, well, we'll just make them, I guess, a bunch of test jobs in the live account, but that's gonna take like an hour and we have to do it right here on the spot. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just talking off the top of my head. Like who knows if that's ever happened to somebody. But that's all in the past because now it just syncs directly from the live account. So you make them a live account, they, they verify there and then boom, they're ready to go in next. All right, next we have improved visibility of environment type when signing in. So basically if you're on a desktop and you're logging in through next.servicetitan.com, you'll see this tag, this little badge that lets you know that you're signing in to next, which is the test environment. And this will also be added to the mobile app, although it might not be immediate because it does require an app update. And so it is dependent on the iOS and Android update cycles. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Hey, be sure to hit like if you liked this video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. And hit that little bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. Also, if you would, please leave me a comment down below to let me know what your favorite update was and let me know about any updates that you're still jonesing for. Appreciate it. Peace. Perfect. Perfect.